tell us about a project that you've worked on in the past and also how you came up with the idea. Right, so we started, we, we got involved with the DARPA Nest program in, in around 2000. And that was a more theoretical kind of work where basically our, our project was to automatically generate uh, sensor network middleware from models. Okay? And so we worked on that and in a couple of years into the project, then DARPA wanted to see uh, more projects that have direct and almost immediate military uh, relevance. So there was a workshop where basically we just did some brainstorming and uh, several different ideas came out of that. And one of the ideas was that, well, why don't we try to do shooter localization with, with wireless sensor networks? So acoustic shooter localization has been around for a long time, but typically what they use, they use, they use um, centralized microphone arrays. So you have six or seven microphones in, a, in, an, in an array, and you have centralized processing and, and all that. But at that workshop, we decided that, hey, why don't we try to use wireless sensor networks to do this? We already have microphones on these nodes, so it seemed, uh, seemed possible to, to do something uh, along those lines. Great. So you mentioned shooter localization. That means there is probably there was probably some use of firearms in your research. What type of regulations are there to the use of firearms in research activity like yours? Well, basically, when we want to do some testing, we have to go to a shooting range, and the shooting ranges have pretty strict regulations of, of what procedures you have to follow, when you can load your weapon how you can carry your weapon around, and, and things like that. But uh, when we started, uh, we had pretty much zero experience with guns, uh, and we actually didn't even have access to a shooting range. So it was kind of funny. One of the secretaries uh, at our institute actually had a farm. She lived in a farm, and so we actually went out to that farm, so not an official shooting range. And then at that farm, since it's private property, we could do pretty much what we wanted to do. And, but then we had to be really careful of, 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 since there were no regulations, right? So we had to come up with our own rules and we had to be pretty strict about them so that we don't shoot each other, basically. What, what other logistics and protocols uh, that you had in place for storage of firearms and conduct of experiments? Again, when we started out, uh, we basically didn't have any weapons, uh, but of course we our home base is Tennessee, so it wasn't very hard to find friends and colleagues who had uh, various different weapons, typically rifles. We actually just borrowed guns from, from uh, colleagues, and basically on the day that we wanted to go out there, they, they would just come out uh, with us, and they would bring their own weapons to, to that farm, originally than the shooting range, and then, uh, then we just did the experiment, and they took their guns uh, home. But a few years ago, we actually decided that uh, we wanted to buy a gun for, for this research. The main reason is that uh, up till that point, we typically use the guns that, that are mostly available in the U.S. So AR-15, uh, the civilian version of the M16 was, uh, was the one that we used mainly. But uh, at that point, with the Iraqi and uh, Afghanistan war, AK-47 became really the, the interesting weapon. And that's actually harder to come by, and actually it's more expensive too. Uh, so we decided to actually buy one. So uh, using one of the project funds, we actually made Vanderbilt uh, buy an AK-47. And to tell you the truth, I, I was surprised because I expected uh, months and months of uh, uh, paperwork to, to do this. But within about a week, we were able to, to purchase that, that uh, weapon. The only... Uh, uh, condition that Vanderbilt had is that the weapon needs to be stored at the Vanderbilt Police Department. And so every time we go out, I have to set up a, uh, an appointment there, I go there, I pick up the gun there, put it in my uh, car's trunk, drive out to the shooting range, and then when we are done, we return it to the uh, Police Department. For the last four or five years, we obviously stopped doing this, we just go out to the farm to shoot. We uh, have a faculty member here, Ken Pence, who is a former uh, SWAT team leader of the uh, Nashville Police Department. So he retired, got his PhD, and now he's, he's uh, teaching here at, at, uh, in the engineering school. 
And so he still has good connections with the Nashville Police Department. So now we do all our tests on, on the shooting range of the uh, Nashville Police Academy. And there we always have somebody uh, supervising us. So it's not just us going out there, but somebody from the shooting range is there. And then we have to follow their protocols, when to load the weapon, uh, and things like that. When somebody can walk down the range to check the equipment and things like that. Do you also do in-house test bed experiments when you don't have access to a shooting range? Or is that even possible in this type of research? Right, so what, what we do actually is kind of the, the opposite direction as usual. So we don't test first in-house, run simulations and whatnot, and then go out. We first go out to the shooting range, take measurements. So for example, we can record the raw audio signals, or we do the event detection and then store the, the detected events in log files. And we try to do a lot of data gathering like that, then bring it back. And then we can do a lot of experiments with, with signal processing, event detection, sensor fusion using that data. So whenever we do simulation, we all, all, always rely on actual real data that we gathered on the shooting range. Uh, because yeah, there, I don't think there is a good simulation for the kinds of simulator that we, for the kinds of things that we are uh, doing. In some computer science experiments, it's relatively easier to redo an experiment compared to what you just uh, described at a shooting range or just simply try a different parameter. In your case, how do you decide if you want to redo an experiment? Is that a difficult decision? Yeah, it's pretty difficult because, as you might imagine, the, the police academy range is typically pretty busy. And, and even if we have, have it reserved for a certain day, Sometimes we show up there, but a higher priority event takes place and they, they basically kick us out. So from that perspective, it's kind of uh, time consuming to, to get ready for a test only to, to, to scrap it. And then also you have to set up all the equipment, you carry it out, you set it up, you do the shooting and all that. So it's pretty, pretty time and resource uh, consuming to do a test like that. So we try to make sure that when we go out there, we are in a... We are reasonably confident that the whole thing is going to work, at least for data gathering, even if all the things that we are testing doesn't, don't work perfectly. Uh, and then we come back and realize that, that something didn't quite work well. Then again, we have to, have to uh, <laughs> consider whether it's worthwhile to, to try to repeat this, basically a day-long experiment, uh, or work with the data we have until we can figure out what went wrong, and, and, and then the next time we go out, we want to be sure that, that the whole thing was going to work. So, so it's always a, a trade-off. And interestingly, I, I got the last year or so, I got a few requests for, for, um, from TV stations or, or something like that to, to shoot a video of, of a test. And typically, since at the moment we don't have funding for continuing this research, I have to tell them um, there is no way I can justify several people to set up the system, go out there and spend the day and, and do that. So I had to turn down a few interviews that were that wanted to actually involve uh, shooting. Are there experiments you wanted to do or redo but simply was not possible due to logistics? I mean, not really, uh, because if, if you really have to do it, then, then we just do it. When we have the funding to to... to come up with a new system and, and deliver it and make sure that it works, then, then we do everything that we have to. And so, yeah, the, we, we had cases when we went out there, it didn't work. And then so two days later, we went out there again and, and, and tried it again. So, so we haven't had to scrap uh, something because of that. Just we always have to consider the trade-offs. Do you want to share some experiences that you've had and that work really well for making these experiments safe for everyone? Well, I mean, as far as the, the, the gun safety is, is really the last few years, as I said, we are going out to the, to the police academy and, and they are probably even stricter than, than commercial shooting ranges about what you can do and what you cannot do. And, and you have to follow those rules because if you don't, then they will tell you to leave and not, don't come back. So those are really the, the regular uh, shooting range kinds of safety protocols. So that probably doesn't really apply to... to most other sensor networks uh, kind of uh, research. At one point we wanted to do moving, uh, uh, so 
putting the sensors on vehicles and, and doing tests like that, but that would be really hard. So we were not able to do that because basically when you are shooting, nobody can be downrange. The only way it would work is with some kind of robotic vehicle, remote control vehicle, and we never got that far uh, to, to have one of those set up. So, so all of our tests were, were static with the node being stationary. So that's that's one limitation that that we couldn't really overcome because because of the safety issues related to gunfire. In this interview, we learned about experiments that require serious consideration of safety issues. I hope we can use your experience to make our experiments safer and more fun. Thank you for your time today. Thank you.